Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London. Today I'm looking at a book from Edward Elgar. It's a first class book, one that I found very interesting to read. It's called Abuse of Dominance in European Union Competition Law. It's got emerging trends at a time where we're at a crossroads with the a decision by the United Kingdom to leave the European Union. The book's been edited by a number of people, Pierre-Luigi Parsu, Giorgio Monti and Marco Botta. The book's available as a book and an e-book and Elizabeth and I have given the title for our book review the following, Relevant Insights into the Entire uh, Competition Law World, New Lines of Research into Abuse of dominance. Let's have a look at the book. This is a very small book. Hardback, blue cover, front, spine and then the back. There's some information clearly there. Um, it runs to just under 200 pages. The index is a short one with page numbering so you should find things pretty quickly. Um, there's the index starting there. Then you get into the body copy of the book itself. You can see that it has footnoting, which is very useful. And at the front, there's the, the main front part of it. There's the link into the Ed Elgar Online uh, system with all the relevant information as well. And then you've got the nine chapter headings in the contents section. Then it's got a list of all the contributors. Uh, and again, I can't go through all the names of the people concerned, um, but we do mention one or two of them. Then there's a short preface, which is well worth reading from the editors. And then you've got abbreviations, always a must when it comes to competition law, because there are a lot of uh, abbreviations used. Then we get into the main introduction. It's a very good book. I was very impressed with it. I read during my bar school um, the European model, uh, European Union uh, section uh, for what, what the bar uh, finals had in those days and this was the emergence at that time of uh, these concepts in competition law which have certainly generated a great deal of interest and they expanded since I did the um, bar exams uh, in the 1980s to the end of the 1980s so it's actually a long time ago um, and th at that time European law and what was then EEC law and then EEC law uh, was very different from what is what we now have today and again everything will change in the next um, few years certainly with the uh, with Brexit. So what do we say? Well the relevant insights into the entire competition law world which is the quote is exactly what you've got insights. Abuse or abusive practices in the a commercial sphere have unfortunately become uh, enough of a commonplace to have generated a complex body of legislation aimed at preventing them or, if prevention doesn't work, providing redress in the courts to those businesses or individuals discharging, uh, sorry, disadvantaged by abuse. And that of course is where we are at the moment. That of course also led to, I think, quite a lot of people being pre anti are links with the European Union, uh, although there are lots of other issues. But you can see certainly from that the complex body of legislation. This has been one of the problems because we have had a tremendous amount of additional stuff and the Great Repeal Act is of course going to review and try to sort out where we are in future in terms of our domestic uh, laws. Such is the overall aim then of a key piece of European legislation, which is well known to the uh, competition lawyer, namely Article 102 of the Treaty on the Functioning of the European Union, or TIFU, which is the focus of this book. To perhaps oversimplify then, abuse of dominance involves big companies bullying little companies by placing them at a disadvantage. Bit of a no-no, but it does happen of course. Refusing to supply a competitor or monopolising a market by limiting consumer access to products or services are only two examples. Um, note, of course, however, that the interpretation of the term abuse or dominance have been subject to a confusing range of interpretations. And I have to say, I am one of probably many people who still have a little bit of concern as to what they actually mean and what the uh, effect of, find, of finding in that area can be. Uh, however, I think this book is very refreshing because 
it cuts through much of the confusion by providing a succinct yet remarkably thorough examination of the many issues inherent in this complex yet pivotal area of commercial law. Yes, the subject matter is European Union competition law, but the inherent principles are applicable internationally. And in the opinion of Hein Hoblen of Freshfields Brookhouse Derringer in Belgium, he said, the book's comparative approach will provide relevant insight to the entire competition law world, and it does just that. Uh, containing the research papers of eight international contributors plus that of the three editors, the book includes a thorough study of recent law and current thinking in this field, and UK readers will be especially interested in the discussion by Professor Richard Wish. I'm sure you all know who he is, he's Emeritus Professor at King's College London, who offers a prime example of abuse of dominance in the case of Arriva the Shires and London Luton Airport, operations. We know who Reaver are, they're a coach service company uh, who eventually won. And if you want to know why and how, um, read the book, because that actually explains it very well indeed. And I'm not going to give the spoiler on that one. Wish reminds us at the beginning of his article that the abuse of dominance is forbidden by the United Kingdom uh, in the United Kingdom by Article 102 and a network of other relevant legislation. Now, it's going to be interesting, obviously, to see how things all pan out in the next 10 years, which is how long it will take to disentangle ourselves from uh, the continent and what we've been doing and set up fresh new structures. So let me conclude by saying in this era of change that with its cross-border perspective and wealth of research into the practical applications of abuse of dominance, uh, provisions, we think that this book will prove to be of immense value to practitioners, academics and policy makers alike. And we also think commercial lawyers will find it especially useful, the publication date being 2017. And I'm sure it will have a wide, wide interest for the next few years. There's the front of the book, the spine, and then the back. As I say, we're into new, new things at the moment. Here's Article 102 of Tifu. Um, you see the paragraph numbering at the sides there, and you see the footnoting, which is very helpful. Um, there's a lot of detail in this book. Some very interesting cases, which I found of interest. Um, there isn't actually a case, um, case list. It's just the list of the contributors. There's no um, list of, of actual cases referred to. But, of course, they are actually in the footnotes in many of the instances. Well, thank you very much to the three editors, Parsu, Monty and Botta, and all the contributors to what I think is an important book at a crossroads for all of us. Um, we enter the 2020s in a very different way from the way I think I thought we were going to, to do so. And everything is going to change. Thank you, anyway, for this excellent current update. Bye-bye.